Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Daniel's Tech World on Medium and YouTube. So we're here today for another one of our backup videos, and this is just kind of <coughs> concluding the week for me, uh, week week of backup. So there are generally once a year, I just kind of go through all my backup approaches to make sure everything is as good as it can be. And ideally, I like to also make it a bit better to make some improvements. Um, so par part of those improvements for me has been uh, has been moving from S3 to uh, Backblaze P B2. Um, I didn't do that only because it's a cheaper source of object storage, uh, which it certainly is. Their pricing is really, really, really good. That's Backblaze B2. Um, mostly because it's a uh, it's an object storage platform that is intended for backup. So putting stuff into an S3 bucket. Um, I just find, you know, it's obviously not intended specifically for backup. You can move stuff into Glacier. Uh, then you need to, getting stuff out of Glacier is a little bit more difficult. Um, has to be done programmatically. So I thought that be it made more sense um, as I am in the habit of backing up cloud to cloud. So that, you know, I'm backing up my cloud services to another cloud. Um, I thought that putting it into Backblaze made more sense. And I took a look at it before and it was only after I discovered um, that Fire FileZilla Pro, which I have on my other screen here, um, actually has a discrete Ubuntu. They don't advertise it for some reason, um, but that works perfectly. So once I found an easy GUI for being able to upload stuff, uh, you know, kind of continuously to B2. So, you know, I just kind of, as I go along, I pull stuff out of my P Cloud and my Google Drive and I move stuff up. Uh, just as I finish and I can archive folders to keep stuff running lean. So once I did that, I decided to move everything over, push everything over. And now my difficulty is trying to find a uh, integration between P Cloud and B2. Now P Cloud is, a, I think, a really, really good uh, cloud storage provider, one of the smaller ones, but uh, it is quite, uh, has a good amount of features in it. Um, the problem that I encountered, and if I can just find the uh, GitHub page for our clone here, uh, I just opened an issue a few hours ago. Uh, it should be here. This is my issue. Um, basically, when you try to authenticate with pCloud, if you have two-factor authentication, second-factor authentication enabled, which of course, if you're putting uh, sensitive documents in the cloud, you definitely should do that. Um, the integration doesn't let you through. You can see it says two-factor authentication required without any option to work around that. So I didn't want to try messing with disabling it. Um, I know I know that Google handled this uh, problem by allowing users to create app passwords, which are single-use passwords that pr other programs can use, uh, and then the, the user can be still be protected as 2FA. So this didn't have that, so I decided to go looking for another uh, solution. And this is just a new P Cloud um, that I've set up here. It's got 74 megs in it. Uh, it's just using my demo Gmail here. And I was trying to find a solution, and I think that this should uh, do the trick, basically. So these are the automatic uh, folders that P Cloud give you, basically. So there's just a PDF here, 20 gigabyte PDF a few um, junk uh, demonstration, I should say, audio files, demonstration pictures, demonstration audio. So firstly, just select everything. And you can do this on your own pCloud with you know, however, however much data you have in there. Now, if you clicked on download selected, this is what I was hoping would work the first time. Uh, if I just pause this, and if I go into my downloads manager in Chrome, you can see that the actual unique link, they've kind of masked the link somehow. So it just gives the API and ends in get zip. And uh, there's really nothing more to see here. Uh, if I just put this here. So that's not, th I was hoping that would work. It didn't work. What does work, however, is if you uh, select all your folders, then you click share download link. Uh, and just call this, for example, backup uh, 080520. Click on generate here. And this will uh, create a sharing link, just a regular sharing link. You one of the peak light features is you can share a link um, and manage that link. So just I'm just going to copy the link over to the clipboard momentarily here. Um, and just also to point out, if you click on shares here in P Cloud, uh, you should obviously, as soon as you're finished this process, even even if you don't share the link with anybody, uh, for the purpose for the purpose of security, you should uh, stop the the share just so that is not uh, that is it's not out there. Um, in the API. 
Um, so basically, I have this on my clipboard now, so I'm just going to take the public share link that that generated, and this will bring me to, um, and this is completely on uh, unprotected, I can log out of PCloud and I'll still be able to see the contents of all the folders and, and this itself. But these two buttons at the top, if I click the download button um, here, and I go for download directly as zip. And uh, you don't need to do this, just click uh, no thanks start the download. Watch what happens now. So another download has started. This time uh, it has a name that matches the archive. There's one, one more important difference. We go into our download manager. Instead of just getting this uh, API AMS and ending in a just, an, just a, a hidden uh, link, just going to clear the other guys uh, we actually have something a bit longer so we can just take a closer look here at this and it's the same link as we had before with api.p client public zip you can see at the end of this api call there is a unique code for the download so uh, we can use this to uh, download use a simple double w get command to download this directly onto a, a remote machine and then using the faster connection of a remote machine push this using our clone up to uh, B2. So I will now demonstrate how to do that. So I've just gone into Amazon Web Services AWS and I've gone ahead and just fired up my EC2 instance. Now the beauty of EC2 as opposed to uh, renting, uh, renting a VPS or you know some kind of uh, any kind of cloud remote server that isn't strictly on demand is that you'd be incurring monthly fees this use case works perfectly with the ec2 model of uh, compute on demand or compute as a service so i'm just fired up ec2 and it's going to take a second or two for that instance to come running and in another uh, terminal over here i am uh, initiating an ssh uh, connection to the instance and uh, i will start the video again when that connection has gone through okay so i've connected in ssh in the terminal to my ec2 instance and uh, I can just take a look around uh, the instance and see where I am now. I have a 75 gigabyte SSD running um, on this instance over here, so it should be enough for us to uh, to comfortably complete the uh, complete the operation. So I'm just going to go to my clipboard here, and I'm going to uh, simply just run a very basic wget and uh, copy in that. And uh, we can see now that the it's obviously it's only 74 megabytes, so it's fairly light. But we can see that it is um, it is getting something uh, you know of the right size, basically. Even though you can see it's going to save as this get, uh, it's going to create it's g it's going to save as it's not going to actually save as a zip. Um, but we can see this uh, this is basically the download file. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is basically. Um, just copy this. Uh, you can also use MV. Actually, that makes more sense. But just just in case it doesn't work, uh, let's go for CP. Um, so CP the uh, download file, and uh, we're going to just call it backup zero eight zero five two zero. Dot zip. So we can see we have um, successfully copied that, and uh, let's unflate it, deflate it. And let's see if this is indeed the archive. So running the unzip command, uh, you can see that uh, all the uh, demonstration files are contained. So it is actually the uh, the archive. So I'm just going to go ahead because we don't need them. I'm going to get rid of this. And uh, I'm going to get rid of the deflated archive because I'm just going to push the, the zip up to, um, up to B2. So now it's time to use our clone. So I just navigated here into Backblaze in the uh, web UI. Um, which is always something I do just to make sure that everything works as expected and so I just don't need to remember the bucket names and the folder names. Demo bucket DR is what I created for uh, these demo videos and I've just created a folder called P, P Cloud there. So I'm working here on the terminal in the uh, EC2 instance uh, as before. So our clone sync and we're going to move up uh, back up to B2. Uh, demo bucket DR forward slash P Cloud. Demo bucket dr slash p cloud and i forgot to add my uh, verbosity operator which i like to do as well there so let's see if this works 
this is okay this looks like an error message but it's actually fine it just means that it's uh, about to kick in and there we go so um, this was cloud to cloud the uh, upload speed on uh, this guy on this EC2 instance is in the region of 800 uh, megabits per second so incredibly incredibly fast wire to wire transfer here uh, it may not show up actually this takes uh, this sometimes takes about three minutes for the web UI so uh, unfortunately uh, I am not able I'm not able to actually prove um, but you can trust me that uh, 74 you can see and that was what one 6.7 seconds to move up a 74 um, megabyte archive up to a book in a B2 so um, I think my actual P cloud is somewhere in the region of three to four gigabytes uh, so moving that up I expect will take no more than a couple of minutes as well so that's a uh, this is a methodology for uh, manually uh, running an extract of uh, P cloud in order to get just to refresh uh, for a second um, you just kind of uh, Um, put your files together into a uh, shareable download link. Uh, give that a name, um, and then uh, initiate a download. And this is this is a bit hacky, but it works. Uh, inis initiate your download, and then just grab the download URL, um, and you can then use wget or curl to download that uh, over over the wire onto a remote onto a remote server, um, and then again using uh, wire to wire, cloud to cloud. Uh, using the R clone uh, command line interface on your remote host. I used an EC2 instance, but you could use a, a VPS or something of that nature to push it quickly uh, at far superior upload speeds than a home, con home connection up to a B2 bucket. Um, and then your P cloud is uh, safely archived in another cloud storage location. Hope this was useful. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch or uh, feedback or discuss backups or anything of that nature, I usually just uh, type in the web URL, but it's danielrosel.co.il, or you can do danielrosel.com, and uh, there should be a contact form there with a PGP key for the uh, privacy conscious. Thank you for watching. Until next time.